Hello, stranger. Are we live? Yeah, looks like we are. Oh, yeah, looks like we are. I'm going to have to mute this so I can hear myself coming back. First time I've done this. First time I've done this. Oh God, there's a blooming echo. Oh God, there's a blooming echo. Right. Okay, hopefully that's fixed it. Nope. Sorry about this, bear with me a second. There we go. Well, I was hoping I'd be very unprofessional and I, I nailed it, didn't I? Let's face it. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so uh, uh, if you're um, one of the people who's uh, watched my YouTube videos before, um, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for coming back. Um, I haven't been around since the last video I actually posted was uh, the end of January. And uh, if, you weren't, if you've been wondering where I've been, well, I've been locked down like everybody else. Haven't really been out in the car. Um, and so I haven't really had very much to say. I never wanted to produce videos unless I had something to say. And um, I've been busy doing other stuff during lockdown, like keeping, keeping my business growing and stuff like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I, and apologies uh, for not producing more videos. Um, I hope everybody's uh, doing well, uh, still sane uh, during this lockdown. Um, what a nightmare. Uh, but let's let's crack on. Um, first of all, why am I doing a live stream? Well, uh, I've been doing organizing, uh, running live streams weekly for uh, my website, AV Forums, um, but uh, always just in the background, clicking buttons. I've never actually been in it, and uh, I I'm not uh, hugely comfortable being in front of the camera and my first uh, job as a coder I would always sit behind a computer and never speak to anybody and my second career as a as a rock drummer I would sit behind my drum kit and never speak to anybody so uh, I'm usually uh, better off most people agree not speaking to anybody so um, let's hope that I don't uh, completely <clears throat> destroy anything this evening okay so there are some uh, topics of discussion uh, hello. First of all, let's uh, let's go back and look at the chat. High and dry. Good evening, Plant Cipher. Um, yes, the Ionic Five. That's one of the things that I want to discuss. Uh, the Ionic sub brand from Hyundai. Um, and uh, so, you know what? I'm amazed that there are two people in the chat. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you for. Um, why aren't you outside? It's such a lovely evening. Uh, assuming that you're in the UK. Um, anyway, okay, so um, today's been interesting because uh, it's three years ago tomorrow that I took delivery of the Ionic, which means that um, today was uh, MOT day, the first MOT. So I booked it in with um, Motor Fair and, uh, and we've been in and it's passed its MOT. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I wanted them to have a look at a problem that I've been having with the Ionic. And let's just uh, enable the browser. There we go. And um, so uh, the problem that I've been having is that and I've been having it sort of a, at least. Did it happen before lockdown? I don't I can't remember if it did. So um, it's probably since we came back beginning of April, maybe, is that very occasionally uh, when, when, and I figured this out because it, it wasn't obvious at first, pressing the brake, um, using the actual brakes, not the regen stuff. So the actual brakes which kick in if you're emergency braking or at a low speed. Um, occasionally after using the actual brake, the accelerator wouldn't work. 
So you'd be there in traffic, ready to go at an island or something, and you press on the accelerator and nothing happens. Um, and it'd be like, oh, uh, oh God, what's going on? Sort of panicking, not a nice feeling at all. So um, eventually I worked out it was it was because of that. I obviously looked online, see if anybody else has had a problem, and they have. So this is a guy, this is... Um, the ionicforum.com and this guy ionic thrust says my friend's ionic ev uh, year 2018 has a periodic error which is that the car does not respond to the accelerator pedal for some seconds when you want to accelerate hesitates to drive for the first three to five seconds nothing happens when you step on the accelerator the problem does not exist from a standstill no only when the car is rolling and you want to accelerate the problem also does not occur when adaptive cruise control is on the workshop has almost given up on this mistake. I hope someone knows about this and has a suggestion for a solution. I'm, I'm going to reply to this. Um, so I found uh, Motor Fair in, in uh, Birmingham where I got my Ionic from. And they said that, uh, yes, this is something they've come across before. Uh, it, it, I understand it took them a while to track it down. Um, basically, it is a faulty earth cable, earth lead. And replacing that earth lead fixes it. And it's a relatively minor job. Um, and it happens, this issue happens so infrequently that, uh, that it, I guess it's going to be a case of just waiting now to see whether it happens again. And at some point I'll realize it doesn't and hey ho, the, the, the car is fixed. So that's the other thing that uh, they did today, the MOT first, and then uh, putting this new cable in, uh, earth cable. Uh, I guess Ionic owners, if you haven't experienced this problem, uh, then uh, fantastic. Uh, if it happens, uh, then hopefully you know about it because of this video and, and other people reporting it, and you can take it back to your uh, dealer and they can replace the earth cable. If that is indeed what the problem is, which at the moment, the, I don't think anybody else has got a better idea. So, um, and I've got a video of that. So uh, let's play that video. So uh, this is uh, Motor Fair in Birmingham. This is actually uh, the mechanic returning the car from the MOT. Uh, and this is where they're driving it into the garage. Uh, this is basically so that you can see the cable. Um, but after they'd fixed it, the guy also did a video report, which I thought was pretty impressive. And this is the same mechanic that uh, has worked on my car for uh, the uh, services. Um, I've spoken to him before. Carl, I think his name is. Um, so that's the cable. He's got it in his hand. It's maybe one and a half to two feet long. Um, and uh, yeah, so he basically has to fit that. Uh, the whole procedure took uh, a time. Good morning, doing a vehicle oh. health check on your Ionic, starting at the front. Visual inspections to your front brakes, which are all okay. Front suspension's all okay. Offside front tires on five and a half mil. Near side front tires on four and a half mil. As you can see, plenty of under trays on the vehicle. Unable to check the body or the, or the floor. Near side rear tire is on three to three and a half mil, would recommend to be replaced. Offside rear tire is on three mil, would recommend to be replaced. Yeah, all four tires are winter tires as well, so they may be a little bit noisy on the road. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. So, yeah, he spotted, obviously, that I've still got the winter tyres on. Um, was planning on changing them in March, but obviously because of lockdown, I couldn't. So I've been running with winter tyres ever since. Quite impressive, this, from um, Motor Fair. Um, I guess, I don't know how many uh, garages do that these days, is produce a video uh, report. Um, but I think it's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, so that's uh, my car done. First MOT and this cable uh, installed. So there we go. Um, and I can show you the... Uh, yeah, so this is the vehicle inspection report that I got emailed about. Uh, and I received this earlier on this afternoon. 
Uh, this is the video. Good morning, my name's Carl, doing a vehicle health check on your Ionic style. There we go. And um, so I downloaded that video so I can include it in this. And this is the report. Um, everything abs absolutely fine. Uh, and it probably took them about, I, I was saying before, Carl interrupted me. Um, the whole process of inst installing this replacement cable took about 12 to 13 minutes. Um, I know because uh, my dash cam was running the whole time. And um, so, yeah, they, they brought up a couple of advisories on the MOT. Uh, my winter tires are, uh, the tread's getting a little bit dodgy. Carl's camera. Yes, Planet Cypher. Um, unsurprisingly, I think it's probably some grease or dirt on the lens. I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, yeah, um, I guess he's more interested in getting the job done than being the, the best videographer. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was pretty uh, cloudy that uh, that picture, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and I will respond to that guy on the Ionic forum, which I don't actually kind of visit very often, to be honest. Um, too busy on my own forum. Okay, so uh, next topic is the Hyundai Ionic sub-brand and the Ionic 5. And... Um, so this is really interesting. I'm glad they're running with it. I think Ionic is a is a nice name. Um, I, I always find it funny and a tiny little bit irritating when people call it the Ionic. Um, yeah, that just doesn't make any sense at all. And um, so the information, I don't know a great deal about it, to be honest. I think it looks pretty good. Um, here's the information on Car Wow. Um, Obviously, there are videos of it uh, um, flying around Nürburgring, but I'm not going to play those because I'll get a copyright strike. Um, 300 miles range expected. Is that WLTP? I suppose so. Um, minimalist design, pod back interior on sale 2021 should cost from 40,000. So um, I wonder if they'll do a, you know, a premium SE version like uh, a standard and then premium SE like there is of the Ionic um, in which case uh, yeah if it's above 40 and there's information here from um, inside EVs um, yeah basically the same kind of information how, how long can I play this before I get a copyright strike Yeah, that's as much as I dare do. Um, so, and of course, um, I'm not selling my Ionic now. I'm keeping it for a while. I don't have a reason to sell it, and, and I love the car. So uh, the only reason why I would want to sell my Ionic is to get a car with longer range, and right now I don't need it. Um, I thought my son was going to university right now, uh, but he's deferred a year because of the A-level results screw up. So basically he'll be uh, twiddling his thumbs for 12 months until he can go September 2021. So I don't have to worry about driving long distances to see him at university. Uh, and he doesn't want to go anywhere near where we are. He wants to go a long way away. Yeah, it is so efficient. Um, and that's the other thing, <clears throat> you know, um, you look at other cars and, and they just don't look like a bullet like the uh, the Ionic does with its aerodynamic shape. Um, so uh, I was thinking and I actually had a look and sat in the E-Nero. But it's a lot of money and uh, just I have to justify it. I mean, it's the business's car. I have to justify every penny that gets spent. And I can't. And, and apart from the range, there's nothing wrong with the Ionic. Uh, I have made a long journey um, after lockdown was was uh, lifted. Uh, I drove from Coventry to Durham to Birmingham to Coventry, and I had to charge five times. And um, only one of the five locations uh, there was an, an issue. I couldn't charge there. The, the um, charge point, it was a polar, was... Um, not working and there was a leaf and an mg zsev in front of me so um i then 
I, I what did I drove to the the charge point at uh, Bannatines in Darlington uh, to charge there instead. No problem. Um, did they drop the ball with the new Ionic and its slower charging speed? Well, I did a, a video about that, speaking to my friend Nigel, who bought, uh, who basically swapped his first gen Ionic for the second gen Ionic, and he loves it, and it's perfect for what he needs. But um, Bjorn Nyland's done a a race between the two, and the first gen won basically because it could charge faster, and and the second gen was sat there still charging even though it had a a bigger battery. So um, it's very disappointing that Hyundai have really screwed up, I think, with the second gen Ionic. But personally, it means that mine is still worth a reasonable amount if I ever want to sell it or when I want to sell it at some point in the future. Um, but anyway, back to uh, the um, Ionic 5. And the, the two things which, which stand out for me about that are the price and the range. So um, uh, the price... Uh, 40,000 ish starting at and the range uh, 300 miles. Okay, that'll be WLTP. So I've had a very, very quick look around and it seems that the real world range is about 80% of WLTP, which makes it 240 ish, um, uh, which puts it in a uh, Tesla long range um um, territory there which has which it also wltp is about 300 but in real life real world uh, conditions is about 240 um so um and i had a look at the tesla site hopefully you can see that um and if you go for uh, so the standard range plus is um 40 and a half grand uh with wltp of 254 miles which um, looks like it's going to be which is kind of under 200 real world and uh, if you go for the long range then that's 47 grand uh, 348 ends up being slightly under um, under 300 notes 200 and something or other real world 200 and is it 60, 70 or something like that? Probably about the same as what people are saying that their, their Konas and Eneros are getting. Um, so, okay, so if the Ionic 5 starts at 40, you know, uh, what's it going to be with all of the bells and whistles that you'll want to put on? And and the question really is, if if a car manufacturer is producing a car that uh, costs about 40 grand, why wouldn't you just get a Tesla? Um, why wouldn't you just get the Tesla Model 3? Um, because the two things about the Tesla really sell it. If you set aside the fact that I think yeah, they look great, there's all that's kind of a, a personal opinion type stuff, very subjective. But the, the charging infrastructure is just so, so good, uh, especially compared to what it's like with using rapid CCS charges at the moment. And um, the software in the car is just so good. You know, you, you 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 have to go a long way to beat how good the, the software is in a Tesla. Fit and finish, obviously, is is disappointing. Um, that Sandy, what's his name? Forget his name. Uh, there's a guy who's basically taken a Model 3 and a Model Y and taken them apart completely. And he says that the actual build quality of the Model 3 is, is not really very good and he wouldn't buy one, but he would buy a Model Y. And if I was going to buy any other car uh, other than the, the Ionic, Model Y is perhaps the one which I'd be thinking about most. Um, but obviously that's, that's going to be a lot of money. That's going to be getting towards 50 grand, is it? Sandy Monroe, yeah, that's the guy. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, so surprising, really, that Tesla didn't put a heat pump in the Model 3 to start off with. Um, somebody subscribed. Yeah, that's if anybody wants to know what that blank area is underneath my video box, that's for alerts. Um, welcome to to uh, 
that person who's just subscribed and his name's gone so quickly i'll have to change that setting so i can see it a bit longer um so yeah uh so the question is what do you think um you know if if the if the ionic 5 is priced and has approximately the same range as a as a tesla model 3 then who's going to buy it instead of the model 3 and and i think this question is is a big one for all manufacturers really because they're competing with tesla who've got such a, a, a huge foothold with um you know the 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 charging infrastructure which is just astonishing it's fantastic you just don't have to worry about it zero range anxiety you just go and so yeah i i hope that the ionic 5 is good um i'll be very interested in having a look at it uh you know um i bet you uh, um who's this website here um carl wow yeah they they reckon that it's going to be popular somebody else writing an opinion piece said they think it's going to be popular um yeah if i if hyundai get it right and put sort of cameras in maybe and recording like you can you know obviously because i put a, a dash cam in mine um but but you know the kind of uh, um all-around recording that you get in the model three uh, um and doubtless the model y as well i'm not sure um you know if you can get kind of nice gadgets like that then you know uh, maybe it's a contender uh, but they've still you know they hyundai are part of the uh ionity consortium aren't they and um yeah id4 and aria i've never heard of that one yeah I mean, I was even thinking about getting an ID3. Uh, I even registered uh, ID3 forum and created a forum for it, but uh, there's very little traffic yet. I actually created a, a forum for the MG ZSEV, MGEVs.com, and that's taken off really nicely. Uh, a lot of people go to that forum. Um, yeah, how many members now? Uh, 556 members right as of right now. Yeah, it's pretty busy. Um, and I created a VW uh, ID, uh, VW EVs forum as well. Um, I mean, there's lots and lots of choice at the moment. Um, I think though manufacturers are, are, are going to struggle competing with, um, uh, competing with Tesla, um, planet cipher MG five. Yeah. So there's an MG five forum here. Um, and there's some photos of it. Uh, Oops, it wants me to log in. I'll log in. There we go. Um, yeah, that looks okay. It's quite looks quite similar to the uh, to the MGZS. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, distraction. So that's the question, really. Uh, Ionic Five. Excited to see it. Glad they're running with the Ionic brand sub brand. Um, uh, I have my doubts though, because I think a lot of people will just go for a Tesla in that price range. Okay. Um, uh, Les Hewitt. Hello, Les. Welcome. Uh, I'd like to have changed the order to the new one if it wasn't for the slow charging. Yeah. Um, if I could have done a part X for not very much money and, uh, gone for the, um, um, the new ionic I'm, 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 i might have done actually what i'm going to do this is the beauty of being able to do this live uh, i took some photos of the ionics parked at um motor fair today and um i'm not sure whether i'm going to be able to do this on the fly uh there were something like six brand new ionics on the forecourt of motor fair today and I, I asked the, um, uh, the, the salesman there, I said, uh, these aren't kind of unsold. Are they? he said, no, they're all sold. They're all fleet. He said, they're selling, they're flying out fleet sales of the, of the latest Ionic, um, which is really encouraging, you know, lots of businesses are buying them. Um, 
And while I was there, uh, a transporter arrived to unload some new ones. Um, so let me just, uh, obviously I don't want to make this really too boring, but see if I can get uh, an image, the photos off my phone that I took today. I should have done this earlier, but I forgot. Uh, let's view details and sort by date modified and they're all the three today let's copy those and paste them into sorry about this just give us a second podcast recordings oh no uh there we go paste them there and now if i uh create uh, a new image add source and browse for it and go to the there it is and let's uh, transform fit to screen. There we go. Can you see that? Um, so that's four Ionics uh, of several that were just parked uh, in the Motor Fair uh, showroom uh, outside the Motor Fair uh, dealership today. I don't know. You know, I, I think uh, Hyundai really ought to paint that, the, the silver grill on the front. Um, it's, I think it, that, I think that looks really ugly. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I don't like it. So, um, yeah, there we go. And uh, so, yeah, um, would I swap for a Kona or a Nero? Yeah, um, well, I, I, obviously I seriously thought about the Enero, but they're what, like 30, um, 35 or something like that. Yeah, um, 35 grand. And uh, I'd get, I'd get best I could possibly hope for for mine in, in some kind of fantasy land would be 20 grand, which means I'd have to find 15 grand to buy, to, 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 um, upgrade to an e Nero. It would be an e Nero rather than the Kona. Just uh, it's boring, but to look at, but um, more practical. Um, and it's just too much money. So no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go for the for the e Nero right now. I can't justify it. The the you know like this. Ninety percent of cars spent ninety percent of the time parked. I mean, my car's parked. I'm doing at the moment, I think probably about, uh, unless, unless I'm actually going somewhere like I did today, I'm doing something like 70, 80 miles a week. And that's it. Uh, you know, year one, I think I did, um, well over 10,000 miles. Year two was over 10,000 miles this year's, I mean, uh, the car's just had its MOT. Um, so it's three years old exactly. And it's done something like 28. So yeah, uh, obviously, unsurprisingly, with the lockdown and everything, um, uh, haven't been using it very much. Can't justify upgrading it, and I'm quite happy to keep it. I mean, apart from, you know, I get these days charging it up, and I have to trickle charge it all the time, changing circumstances and all that. So I'm using the granny charger all the time, and I get like 144 miles range uh, when I switch it on after charging, like I did today, and. Um, uh, and that's really accurate. Um, and, and I mean, that's enough for me most of the time. And then, you know, I kind of, I think, you know, us vets of electric cars, we get used to using Zap Map and, uh, you know, figuring out which charges are likely to be available and then having backups if they're not for when you want to travel long distances and rapid charging stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, what should I do now? Um, Yesterday, we saw something kind of a little bit unfortunate. 
uh, we were driving along and somebody was lying down in the middle of the road on a zebra crossing surrounded by a few people um, as I drove past I was of course somebody will have called the, an ambulance but I I you know I thought okay well I've got to ask does anybody want to see a video of that give us if I get like two thumbs up I'll play it otherwise I won't I'm gonna it's like dead air now isn't there while I'm waiting for people to give me thumbs up okay well if I get a couple of thumbs up I'll play that video but I'm going to move on to the next thing the last topic of conversation tonight which is uh, the ideal range. I've been thinking about that as well. Thank you, Stephen. One thumbs up. Um, ideal range on um, on a car. Obviously, it's uh, uh, it's going to be different for everybody because they, everybody uses their cars differently. But for me, um, going on a long journey. Okay, that's two thumbs up. I'll play the video. <laughs> Three. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, so um, um, for me. I'm 55 now, and uh, uh, I I tend to uh, hydrate a lot. Excuse me. Which means that I have to go for go to the loo a lot. Three hours driving nonstop is kind of pushing it for me, and so I reckon that. Um, so I reckon based on the fact that people are going to have to stop anyway after about three hours i put this uh, little document together whoa -ho. let's make that a little bit smaller there we go i hope you can read that if you're looking at this on a phone you might not so uh what's the ideal range yeah oh god yeah it's a liter it's a liter um mug and i just i just drink through these i go through it's good for you isn't it um so uh what's the ideal range how long can you drive before needing a break? Uh, well, I reckon it's three hours, you know, roughly. I wouldn't, I don't think I could go for more than three hours without stopping for a wee. And that's equates to about 150 miles, 240 kilometers. So um, let's say that if you're, if you're on a long journey and you're recharging, um, then you want to have 150 miles range before you stop again okay uh, and based on the fact that uh, you're supposed to recharge at about 20 percent and you don't want to charge to more than 80 percent obviously it starts to really slow down what the amount that you want to charge when you get to the rapid charger is 80 percent minus 20 percent is 60 percent um Okay, two hours, Stephen. Yeah, um, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, just to stretch your legs, even. But anyway, so if we if we take it that um, you want to put uh, one hundred and fifty miles in when you're putting sixty percent in, so you need to charge sixty percent of the total range to get one hundred and fifty miles. So if 100 miles, if 150 miles is 60% of the total range, then the ideal real world range is 150 miles divided by 60% times 100%, 250 miles or 400 kilometers. That I think is, that's real world range is the sweet spot for me, I think. Um, that's assuming, you know, that you, you're going to be using rapids reasonably regularly, I guess. Um, uh, but of course, that's a real world range, and and I've had a quick look today, and it seems that that real world range is usually about eighty percent of the WLTP range uh, quoted. So if that's the case, then the WLTP range of a car needs to be about three hundred and twenty miles or five hundred and fifteen kilometers. I hope that makes sense. Um, and if that's the case, well, even the, the very nice range quoted of the Ionic 5 of 300 miles is a little bit a little bit low. Might seat you, Stephen, if you're stopping after two hours. But, um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, so WLTP, there we go. I worked it out today. I hadn't thought about it before. It needs to be about a 320 miles, giving a real-world range of about 250 meaning that when you charge up at a rapid and put 60% in, 
you're putting on 150 miles, which will take you the three hours before you need to stop for another week. There you go. That's the logic of it. Hope that makes sense. Um, so yeah. Um, and the Kona and the E-Nero are probably the best uh, candidates for that at the moment. Um, because you, they do that and uh, they're what, 35 grandish. Um, you know, five grand more, five and a half grand more will get you a Tesla Model 3 um, standard plus, standard range plus, and, and that uh has a wltp of 254 real world is less than 200 so yeah in that case you know that they those are priced so that so that there's a good argument for getting them over the Tesla's. um so there you go um this podcast this uh live stream i think is going to be quite quite short and sweet uh and so um let's play this video what happened yesterday uh, so just driving back home and uh here we go it's not very nice to see it and it, but I've, i don't think i've ever seen anybody somebody call the emergency services already Okay. I don't know, but yeah, not stellar parking now, is is it really? <clears throat> anyway, so that's what happened yesterday. Uh, not very nice to see somebody in the road like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised. I haven't seen it more often, to aren't to be honest. Um, what is this? What is, guys, what is this area? I've not heard of it. 310 miles. Is that um, WLTP or real real world range? Um, if you send me a link, I can try and bring that up while we're on. Let's get rid of the browser for a sec. Let's do a search for it. Oh, it's a Nissan area, is it? Is it Nissan New Nissan area. Okay. Nissan area. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. Is that it? That looks nice. That looks really nice. It's a Nissan though. <laughs> Has it got proper cooling? That looks really nice. I like that. What do you think? I really like that. That looks really nice. It's quite high off the ground, isn't it? Up to 310 miles of range. The WLTP again, though, isn't it? And CCS. Well, you bloody well hope so. I mean, God, who's going to who's gonna launch a new car now and it not have CCS? Well, in Europe and North America, anyway. I mean, I know the Chinese have got a completely different um, connector. Does it have a... No, it doesn't have a panoramic sunroof. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Thanks for the tip. I'm going to look at that. What's the price? It says it on here somewhere, I guess. Yeah, let's face it. Nissan, I've got plenty of experience in producing electric cars. It's just that, you know. Um, did somebody mention the price? And this is 2021. That's funky. That looks pretty good. Yeah, that is nice, isn't it? Kind of more minimalist. 
Yeah, that looks really nice. 63 kilowatt battery. Okay, 5.9 seconds. Wow, there's an 87 kilowatt. Okay. Not zero, not to 60 MPH in 5.1 seconds. Okay, so it's pretty quick. Okay, and what's the price? Let's do a search for the pound sign. <clears throat> okay, 40 grand. Okay, so, uh, you know, there's competition for the Ionic 5. 40 grand. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, isn't it? All these things coming along. Okay, well, uh, I think I'm going to, we're 41 minutes in and, you know, um, I'm really enjoying this. I'll do it again, I think. Um, if you want to... Uh, if you have any interest at all in audio, visual, home consumer electronics, AV forums, uh, we've got a, a live stream happening at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be pressing the buttons in the background, but I, I, <laughs> I don't come anywhere near the expertise of the guys who talk on that. Phil Hinton, um, Steve Withers, Ed Selly, Kaz Harlow, and Tom Davies. Um, they really know their stuff. Uh, it's awesome. Um, so if you're interested at all in um, home cinema, hi-fi movies, um, anything to do with sound bars, tellies, anything like that, uh, give it a give it a, a look at avforums.com or youtube.com forward slash avforums. And um, so, yeah, that's me done. Um, thank you very much for joining me, those you guys who did live. Um, very grateful and... Um, uh, it's really reassuring. I'm I'm only going to make I'm not going to make videos for the sake of it. I, I'm going to make them when I, when I have something to say. But I've enjoyed this kind of hangout, and um, I think I will do it again. And oh yeah, it's oh I've only got one screen here. Like when I'm doing the AV forums podcast, I have two 27 inch monitors, and even that's not enough. I'm thinking about having to get a third, or doing it all on one screen. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not, not great at multitasking. But anyway, I've enjoyed it. So um, thank you very much for joining me. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'll be producing it, uh, another video sooner than uh, seven months. So uh, stay safe and, and have a good evening.